On today's segment, Talking Politics, I am not alone. Joining me is Adam Gadba, the former presidential aspirant of All Progressive Congress, the APC. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having it's me. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Now, sir, controversies have been hanging around the air after, the, after your candidate of APC, Bola Ahmed Asuwaju, engaged during an appearance at Shansom House, a UK-based think tank, on Monday being the 6th of December, when he was said to answer the key policies question, which includes the high spread of insecurity, huge unemployment rates, and how to stop the oil theft in Niger Delta. But um, surprisingly, he told his aides to answer to the question, and this has been drawing a lot of controversy. So what is your reaction towards that? Well, I think that is one of the most spectacular actions of Ashwa Jupala Amit. Um, it is like a true representation of the personality that all of us love about him. And also every responsible institutional believer should respect about him. Ashwa Ju doesn't believe in shining alone. He believes in teamwork. He believes in carrying his own people alone. He believed in unraveling the talents and potentials of people that are following him. He has been a builder of people throughout his life. If you check what he has done in Lagos from 1999 to 2007, and the succession planning engine that had been turning around and throwing excellent people that have come to serve the country at the highest level of the office you can imagine, including the vice presidency, was a simple act of delegation of responsibility. So what Ashwaju showed there is that we are a team, and Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu is an institution of people. So asking Ashwaju a question doesn't mean asking a personality. You are asking an institution. Therefore, you need an institutional answer. And the institutional answer should come from the people governing the institution. And that's why, that's what it displays. I'm sure the Oyibo people there are shocked about how Nigeria well, is. Well, really was that really it. necessary at it that point? It is supposed to be. It is the most necessary thing to do for a leader who is not driven by I mentality or me persona. It's a very serious indication of a we kind of a person that we all are supposed to support. So to me, it's spectacular. It's a very spectacular performance. Okay, on this course of the occurrence, a spokesperson of the main opposition, I mean the People Democratic Party, the PDP, okay, of responding, why others ask? Okay, he said, this is an addiction of responsibility. Why others confirm it to be lack of physical and mental ability for him to rule the most populous nation of Africa. I think um, anybody that says this is an application of responsibility don't understand what institution is. That person is saying that if you are a president, you should carry gong and go and bomb Boko Haram yourself. But if you delegate it to the chief of army staff, you are dedicating responsibility. That uh, if you are a president, you should go and do farming yourself. There should be no ministry or agencies of uh, agriculture. If you don't, if you delegate it to somebody, you are abdicating responsibility. Those people just don't understand what they are talking about. You know, PDP is very desperate for power. They want to come back. They have been in fasting for about just seven and a half years. Meanwhile, they put Nigeria in fasting period for 16 years. They stole everything. One trillion dollars that they got from 1999 to 2015 was all cornered into their private budget. But they suck it dry. They have none. That's why they're very desperate to come back to power and carry all Nigerian property and sell so that they can share the 10% value that they can get. So forget about them. They can say anything. Somebody that is talking about um, uh, cognition, I don't know if you can do justice to a personality of a Sua Dubala and look at the strategic input he has played over time up to this moment. And you begin to imagine the kind of IQ and the balance and decisiveness on this kind of personality and then try to associate it with uh, cognitive issues. I think these people just don't understand the persona. As he said, he said, we are very envious of his competence and confidence. But I'm telling you, that man is very precise, is very concise, is very self-aware, 
you can see from the evidence of the interview he had with the BBC. Mm -hmm. Policy questions answered directly, succinctly, without any mincing words. None of these candidates, for all the period they have been thinking and jumping around, none of them is able to offer clear and precise direction to Nigeria's key challenges and solutions than the eight-minute interview of Ashura Nicola Amiti. That man is not there yet. They should surrender and come back to APC. Oh, really? So why, yes. why do you think they should surrender and come back? But talking about um, presidency, presidential race, it's, um, it's, uh, we, are, we are in a democratic government, aren't we? Yeah. So why do you think the rest should surrender and come back to Because they've lost the battle. It's clear. You look at uh, what Obi is doing. The only people supporting him is Biafra. You know? Once uh, he lost, they will go back to do their Biafra agitation. When you look at the Chukwa Bakari, uh, they are not ready. I think he's only saying he wants to sell everything. He wants to sell. In fact, he was in Lagos, I think, a few days ago. He said that he wants to sell uh, Wari refinery. He wants to sell uh, Potakwa refinery. He wants to sell Kaduna refinery and share the money. <laughs> you understand? That's just the thinking. These people are not serious. They are not ready. They don't understand what we need. They don't understand Nigeria in the contemporary 21st century society. They don't care about the future of this country. Now that they thought their lies and fabrications have been exposed, it's been very clear by Nigerians. Nigerians know this. The only option for them is they should admit their inadequacy and incompetence and lack of capacity to drive Nigeria to the future we desire and come and submit to assure your presidency. Okay, you're talking about the forthcoming election. You and I know that when it comes to Kano, um, Kano is one of the most um, populated um, states yeah. which one can probably pass through when it comes to voting. Okay, now looking at it, Juan Paso and um, the main opposition, which is the People's Democratic Party, are from the same region. Do you think the vote of Lagosians would be able to um, give your candidates the benefit of being the next president? This is, this is even 100% assured. Canon's level of democratic understanding to me is even beyond that of the United States of America. Kano understood what it means by democracy. And they understood that democracy is built upon the promises and keeping it. And they understood that there is a bargain between Nigeria at the point of producing Muhammad Buhari. They are the major stakeholders of Buhari government. The Southwest came to Kano and told Kano that come to us in partnership. We will give you our vote to produce Buhari as a president for eight years. In exchange, we are going to produce our candidate and you are going to vote for him. Can we keep that promise? And if they don't? They will keep that promise because they have always done that. Kano will be Ashua Jews back here. It's already in his pocket. There is hardly a Kano man that don't know that Konkoso is just pursuing Kano State. They know that a vote for Konkoso is a wasted vote in the national scene. And they knew that they had a promise, a pact, with the Southwest for 2023 presidency. So they would hold on to that promise so that when it comes to their turn, they will not be denied. That's what I know about Kano. I studied in Kano, I lived in Kano, I understood the people, I am very proud to be associated with Kano, and I'm telling you that Kano will go for sure. Write this down. Okay, now, one of um, the major foreigner and the presidential candidates of the Labour Party released um, his manifesto last week. And I noticed you have been um, st studying it. What can you say about it? It's empty. It's the most incoherent document that I have ever seen. I think if you give uh, uh, maybe 400 level students a project about contemporary Nigeria, you'll produce a far better document than an alleged presidential candidate who doesn't understand um, where security starts and where the economic prosperity ends. Peter Obi's thinking is always jumping to Bangladesh, India, China, Vietnam, you know, and then try to create Nigeria out of those countries from his brain. He hardly even mentioned Anambra State because he doesn't believe in what he did there. He always jumped to another country to try to copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. Even the manifesto, if you look at most of the statistics that are there, they are fake, they are Googleable. If you Google them, you just get them from one institution that is on serious that decided to package it. So they just rationally come and put the document together. They call it 62 pages. He himself, the actual document is actually 62 pages. He published it and said it's 72 pages. 
When I read it, it's only 46 pages. All the remaining pages were his stories. So it doesn't make sense. This man don't understand. How can you tell me that this is what you are going to use to rule Nigeria? I think Peter will be joking. And I think he enjoyed the retweets and the likes, you know, but he, don't, he knows definitely they are not going to translate it to the report. So what he should do is to prepare his acceptance of defeat speech at the end of 2023 election. That's my advice for him. Oh, now, talking about the um, rising, insecu rising insecurity in Nigeria, mm. if your party have the chance of coming back um, mm. 2023, how do you think it's best to tackle the issue of insecurity? Because one of the major work of government or um, obligation of government is to protect lives and property. And mm. so far, the rate of insecurity has been on the very high side. What other method or strategies do you think your party should adopt to bring an end to insecurity? You had a show just interview on BBC, I'm sure. And you had that Boko Haram are degraded and relocated. They have to change the name. They call themselves now Iswap. And they jump into the Northwest. And even there, they are now being decimated and dismantled. That's why you hardly hear their justice recently in Nigeria again. But we have some limitations in the case of the technology we get from the Western powers. As you have mentioned that very clearly. And he clearly stated the alternative. The alternative is to mass recruit pro-Nigerian guys, young people, to wipe them out. And again, to look for alternative supply of technology. We don't have to depend on the West if the West is not ready to give us technology to be able to wipe this miscreant. But this government has succeeded in dealing with insecurity to the barest minimum. I see what is just going to carry broom and sweep it away. And that is going to happen. I'm not sure we will have insecurity challenges if Ashwaju become the president between May 29, 2023. I am not sure we will have insecurity issue by December, in December 2023. Well, how okay. sure you about that? It's Very clear, because the, the, there are things that are just predictable that are, that are easily accessible. When you look at what he tabled in his manifesto and all the approaches he's trying to bring about, they are just clear, practicable, approach that is going to just wipe all the insecurities we have in this country. In fact, to the, to the best of my knowledge, Buhari has done almost 90% of the job. What is Shwaju is coming to do is well with 10% remaining, and he is going to do that. Okay, let's just look into the new policy withdrawal. The CBN new withdrawal policy has been drawing a lot of attention. Um, your, what's your stand on how you think it will affect the average Nigerians? I think it will affect average Nigerians positively because it is going to encourage money to remain in the bank. Number one. Number two is going to encourage the system to be able to follow the money. Nigeria, prior to this CBN policy, had about 85% of all the monies that CBN has printed and pushed to the banks outside the banking system. 85% of your money is outside the banking system. It's in people's soccer way, water tanks and rooms. How can we continue in this kind of situation? When the whole world is trying to move to central bank digital currency, CBDCs, this is the framework that everybody is adopting. And we are still cash, and the cash is even not in the bank. The cash is in people's backyard. This is not a kind of country we want to be in. This is a vertically integrated criminal procedure that needs to be arrested quickly, and that's what CBN did. One, changing the result of the NERA. Two, introducing digitization of the currency con uh, consumption. When you do that, you are going to be able to track that kind of currency usage or the hard currency, uh, I mean um, the, the cash usage, and deny criminal elements from kidnapping for ransom. Because if you kidnap someone and you say that you needed to be given a ransom and there is no available way that this cash can be delivered to you, that means you stop kidnapping because there is no profit in kidnapping again. And it doesn't make sense for you to just catch people and be killing them. Okay. So that will help in eliminating Co this. Considering the, the poor masses in the country, you, you and I know that there are a lot of villages that before you even get to where the bank is, for example, you have to travel kilometers um, to get to the town where the city is. I'm talking about traders, people who do petty business and all that. Do you think they are being considered before this policy? They are being considered, considered seriously. I think there are more POS in Nigeria than perhaps the whole of Africa. POS locations. People are busy setting up POS locations. Even me, I have two POS locations in a village of Mubi. So there are many POS locations. And people are making money from it. 
a kind of a mini piggy banking system that is even creating job opportunity for so many young people. So go to nearest POS and do your transaction. Most of the small, small shops should be empowered to the POS. The banks have responsibility. They must be able to make profit, and for them to make profit, they must reach the customer. The bank cannot just sit down in big, big offices in Lagos and be expecting people to be give, bringing cash or taking cash. They will just pack cash and sit down in one place. That's not what banking is supposed to be. Banking is supposed to include every other person into the formal monetary system. So their job is to go to those villages where there are no banks and make sure that there is a bankable procedure that will extract that currency out of the people into the banking system and also be able to give them when they need it. So it is a two-way thing. The regulation has been set, so the market have to pick it up and try. If the market truly really want to prosper, the market have to reach where people are and help them. All right. Oh, thank you very much, Yom, sir. It's a pleasure having you on this program, and we hope to have you some other time. Well, at this point, we come to the end of the program. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, on Facebook at Prime Reposers News. Thank you. I am Macy Emelite. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>